going to start recording. Thank you, everybody, for wel welcome, everybody. It is uh, 129 of 2022 at 12 o'clock p.m. Just wanted to welcome everybody to another, uh, to in the very first, actually, uh, P. Marion Space Museum talk and discussion. Uh, of course, I'm Dan Rivera, and I'm hosting this. Those that come in here, um, uh, please be mindful of, of the rules and regulations if you do come in, or not the rules and regulations, but the rules that um, I posted on our group chat, our group uh, discussion over uh, at the fans of, P of the PMAR and Space Museum. Now, I just wanted to uh, be, um, wanted to be uh, forthcoming. Uh, please, no, no uh, vulgar language. Uh, if you've got a question, please uh, just raise your hand or type Q for question and C for comment. That uh, way we can keep it more organized. Um, everybody, you are allowed to, I muted everybody on coming in here. Um, and I also went ahead and uh, allowed everybody to have their uh, cameras um, to come on here. I don't know if the settings took or not, but that's okay. It's been a while since I used uh, Zoom. Uh, reason I use Zoom is because it's a lot easier to uh, do these meetings and everything like that. So um, we'll get right into it. Uh, first thing I want to mention here is on our group page, Mr. Steve Williams uh, went ahead and, and was nice enough to put a, um, a little bit of a backstory of what happened during 2021. And uh, I do want to give Steve uh, props for that. I appreciate that, Steve. Um, that's awesome. Um, the 2021 movements that they did from the, the base and other from other places. Uh, very first one um, was a Swiss Air Force Dassault Mirage 3 RSR uh, 2107. They arrived on February 21st, uh, I'm sorry, February 22nd of 2021. Um, that, that arrived, it was, it's, uh, it was supposed to go to the air show this year, this last past year, but unfortunately uh, it d decided to get the flat tires as they were pulling it out for the air show. So uh, <laughs> they had to replace it with a, a Jaguar, Sepikot Jaguar, which is um, what I'll be discussing down here too as well. Now, they also had a Cheyenne type of tail turret from the US Coast Guard Boeing PB-1G Flying Fortress 7725 that arrived on, on in March of 21. Um, and uh, I have not seen that yet. I don't know if, uh, I don't think we have pictures of that on the group, but I am trying to, I'll try to get some photos of it. Uh, if anybody has any photos out there of it, uh, I'd appreciate it uh, to put on, on, the, uh, on the group and on the website. Of course, a lot of you know about all the Sherp, Short Brothers, C-23 Sherpas that, that came in. Um, we have the serial number 88-01869, 90-0702, I'm sorry, 012, excuse me, 90-0716, plus C-23s 9D3-01321, 93-01334, and 93-01335. They were all towed from Davis Mountain to uh, the museum, museum site for storage in April of 2021, okay? And um, pretty awesome. And we also had uh, another group, another batch, come or one more come over. There's four in total, I don't know, there's uh, eight total Sherpas that were that were towed over. Um, the next one was a 94-00310 was delivered to the museum from Davis Mountain the same, same date, same month. Um, now, those Sherpas have uh, mostly gone, um, from what I understand, at the museum. I've gotten photographs. Um, the last recent photographs of the Sherpas that I got was uh, um, about maybe three, four months ago, five months ago, and about four months ago, I'd say. And there was still one or two still left. 
So um, I what I know is going to be earmarked for uh, the museum, so you guys can see um, <clears throat> when on display. It's kind of like a Shorts 330. It's a military's version of Shorts 330, uh, civilian uh, plane. Now, as all of you know, uh, by now we also have a uh, F5 Tiger II 7415612. It was delivered to the museum in May of 2021. And we um, we got this from the Flying Leathernecks Museum. Unfortunately, the Flying Leathernecks Museum had closed to their current location and they decided to offload and add the F5 to us. Um, Steve Smith, uh, I met Steve Smith uh, last year and Steve was telling me that uh, they were looking for a new location, which now, safe to say, they have a new location uh, at El Toro, the old for El Toro um, in California. So let's congratulate them. That's uh, one post I made on the uh, on the group about the Flying Leathernecks Museum, um, um, so on and so forth. Uh, now, this is one one item I was involved in myself and. It was the Bo a Boeing B-52H Stratoforce 61-0009 LA Damage Incorporated 2. That was towed from Davis Mountain for the, to the museum for dismantling in July of 2021, July 12th, actually. Um, I have video on our group YouTube and our website YouTube, I should say. Um, the YouTube is for our group. Uh, oddly enough, Damage Incorporated 2 was just recently towed to Oklahoma for um, was basically used, is being you know, now used for um, uh, modernization of the B-52 fleet for the engines. Um, they're, what they're doing right now is they're testing for, for the uh, um, new engines that are going to be going on to the, to the B-52s to give them prolonged life because the older engines are starting to starting to wear down as they say and uh, they don't have spares some of them they do have spares and the spares are starting to dry up from what i understand um it finally arrived last week uh in oklahoma city uh tinker air force base uh, boeing is actually out there uh doing testing on the aircraft itself and so basically now uh, that B-52H has, has gone down in history as helping to modernize the, the, the fleet. Uh, apparently, the B-52 has outlasted its life, lifespan, so, and it's still going into uh, a bunch of other stuff. So, Now, uh, we also had an ex-Piper PA-48 Enforcer demonstrator, and a and 48 one pe arrive in July, on July 12th, the same day. Basically, I've been sleeping for disposal uh, from the U.S. Air Force uh, Museum collection, um, basically due to his lack of Air Force service. And we just happened to get it. So that's going to be a nice little example. That should be out on display probably this year sometime, probably earlier, if not later. And um, that's what we've got going with that particular uh, enforcer. Kind of to me, it looks like a... a, a modern p51 mustang that's what it kind of looks like so moving right along uh we have a marked unmarked u.s army north of grumman mq5b hunter uav number 362 arrived arrived at the museum 20th of july last year and is now being suspended um on the roof of hangar one uh, in august it got uh hung up there now we had uh, another um, another Sherpa N282BT X93-0135, I'm sorry, X93, uh, what is it, uh, 01335. That was towed to Davis Mountain and departed uh, on the 3rd of August. Basically, um, delivery to Blue Tide Aviation of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So I actually saw that Sherpa take off from my job. So I wish I had um, um, 
I wish I had a video and pictures of that. Unfortunately, I don't, because uh, that went right over my, my work. Then we had another uh, C23 Sherpa N51LG X930 one three two one and N three three zero PWX nine three dash zero one three three four. They were towed to Davis Mountain and they flown they were flown actually to Ryan Field on the twelfth of on the nineteenth of August and delivered to uh Dagro Age Ag uh Cayman Islands. So it's kinda interesting. Kinda interesting these Sherpas are being modernized. Um It was modernized. Well, I guess it was modernized and, and, and given to another company or something like that. That's from what I hear. Uh, the tail fin of the Boeing B-52 Damage Incorporated had departed on the 9th of October 2021 to basically an un unknown destination, I should say. That's what they what uh, has been told here. And um, as we all know, the actual fuselage and wings were delivered to Oklahoma City. Um, you can, if you look at Boneyard Safari, you look at uh, uh, all the other ones, aircraft, uh, relic, wrecks and relics. We've got them featured on the, uh, what you call it, so on, on our group page. All right, and this is where we have some interesting stuff happening. Um, the former Royal Air Force Sepicat Jaguar GR3A XX37 and T.4 XX150 arrived from Honeywell Aerospace from at Chan Chandler, from Chandler, um, 13 of October 2021. That actually was one that was actually displayed at the the air show. Um, and John Gosho's Grumman HU16B Albatross N291 TC arrived. That's the uh, 21st of December, and we're still uh, pretty much directly to the back lot of the museum. Now, see, uh, seeing that we have gotten a lot of things at the museum that are slated to um, other areas, um, we've also been fortunate to have some new stuff come in, okay? Um, the B-52 Balls 3 that uh, carried the X-15 is still under um, restoration. Uh, the Tire Dude um, is now on, uh, Tire Dude helicopter is now back in on the museum grounds. Uh, I will be uploading a video, to, uh, a walk around video for it. So some of you have already seen on the group, um, I've actually uh, gone in and um, gone in and actually done a walk around uh, that had uh, dialogue. So I got one one of those ones that aren't doesn't have any dialogue for those modelers out there. I'm directing a lot of these walk arounds because you've got to hear the outside at the museum. What I'm trying to capture when I take those videos is I'm trying to capture the moment of the the air museum. Not me yapping, not anybody yapping, but just so you can see it. That's why I sit there and I put my hand on the aircraft. Like if I, if I touch this, um, put my hand right here. If I touch, there you go. If I touch the uh, this Skyhawk, for example, I want to be able to get the feel of what it, an airplane actually feels like. You know, for some reason, tactile feel is more, and tactile feel as well as visual, you know, it gives you the experience. And that's kind of what I want to focus on. I'm trying to acquire a GoPro. That way I can have it on top of my, my head. So when I walk around these, I can actually just, you know, grab with my hands. Look, check this out. Look, 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 you know. So... That's the reason why I wanted to get uh, just the wind at your back, as they say, and the touching sounds and so on and so forth, because it's a surreal experience. When you go to these aircraft museums, it just, it's, you think about where they've been and what, what kind of stories they can tell you. And that's what I'm trying to capture. 
Uh, I know Mark Antonio uh, Avila, he does the same thing. Uh, he tries to sit there and just, you know, do the exact same stuff. And the, um, just the feel of it. So uh, other aircraft that we've got out there, um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, correct me if I'm wrong in the in the comments or whatever, you know, I mean, even in YouTube, and I'll be posting this on our Facebook group as well. So on the comments, whoever can correct me, uh, I'd appreciate it. Um, but we've got a lot of new arrivals. We've got uh, a Cobra right now in restoration. They just brought a, a, across a Black Bunny F4 Phantom from VX4. As you know, VX4 is, uh, t I believe it's a test test squadron of some kind over at China Lake. Uh, of course, all you all you military people out there who've actually been in, in that squadron or been close to that squadron can actually see and feel and, and remember a lot of the stuff that's come in, went on. Um, they switched over to F-14 Tomcats and then they swapped over to, I believe it's F-18 Hornets. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, which version of the F-18, but it's a test and evaluation squadron, I believe is what it is. But that was brought over, um, brought over, I think uh, last a uh, couple of days ago and that's what's gone in. That's actually going to Castle Air Force Base. I believe it's going to go to the Castle Air Force Base Museum. See, for some reason, when the when the aircraft they come out of the boneyard, they come straight to Pima for um, reclamation, as far as to be converted over to an aircraft, uh, a museum aircraft. Or they, that's a point of departure uh, for other museums, okay? And I think Pima's doing a really good job at it because they're bringing over things from the museum that I didn't even know existed over there. So it's like, you know, that's one of the good things about Steve Williams. He actually brought, he's been watching um, things like that and doing like a backdrop of what's been brought over to the museum in the past year so steve if you're out there i'm give you some props man you did a real good job um and uh hopefully i would i have i have offered steve a, a part in the website as well as being our official uh crier as they call it i guess it's a crier or somebody who keeps tabs on, on things at the museum um now the reason the reason I was out at the museum for that B-52 move is because I originally got wind that they were bringing over a C-5, okay? The C-5, just so everyone knows, is waiting on paperwork for it to be brought over, okay? All I can tell you, that's gonna be a hell of a move. And as soon as that happens, I've got time saved up just to get out there and go, you know, and, and at a moment's notice. Um, so any of you hear anything about that C5, please let me know. Also, I'd like to get a group of all of us out there to actually witness the move. Steve, I know you were out there for that Black Bunny uh, F4. Um, be nice to get some of the uh, uh, P. Marin Space Museum fans out there to, to just collaborate and, and hobnob and talk and shit. Oops, sorry. I'm violating my own route. Bad Dan. Sorry. But I'd like to get everybody out there to, you know, see what's going on. I They had a lot of problems with the B-52 when they moved it over. Okay. I got... I got the video. If you need to go on the YouTube channel, I got the video of them moving it across the uh, uh, Valencia. Hey, John Taylor. Welcome, John Taylor. I'm going to admit him. It's good to see John. There's John Taylor. There's John Taylor. Hello. Uh, hey, John. It's good to see you, buddy. How's it going? 
Not too bad. Finally, you know, John, John decides he wants to join us. I actually had the privilege of meeting this gentleman at the museum, or not the museum, the museum and the air show. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he had his wife tagging along. <laughs> How you doing, John? I'm doing quite well. Hey, good, good, good. How's the how's the how's the family doing? Doing well. Good. You, you know you're late. You know you know you're late for the discussion, right? <laughs> yeah. It's had some some stuff pop up this morning that had to get taken care of. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, John actually is. Um, he used to work with the museum as a volunteer, I believe, right, John? Yeah. And John actually has histories and pictures of this museum when it before when it was opened up, as well as some of the aircraft and some of the original locations of the, some of the buildings. Uh, when John and I, we were, were we, me, John, and Tobin Fuller, we were at the um, um, the museum. We met up the uh, day before, I think it was the day before the air show, John? Yes. I think it was, a, it was a Friday, yep. And we all were speaking about um, how, you know, this, this building was over here, it was never over here. I mean, that's funny because it's like, we, it's like, I remember it to be here, but what, where, look at, look at this, you know. But John has been, um, you know, really positive about this group and about the website and things like that. So we, um, that's one of the reasons why I built the site, guys, is because I wanted to make sure that the kids can enjoy this. I honestly don't see a lot of people updating Pima's website, which really saddens me. I, I mean, I could probably do a better job at it, but um, um, if it was my job, you know, uh, I would probably probably do it for free if I could. But, you know, because I love aviation so much, I got a good job as it is right now. But like I said, I would do it. Because I don't I don't think Pima actually sits there and keeps their web presence going. And that kind of, kind of bothers me. It really does. You know what I mean, John? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it bothers me because some of their... I mean, the only real thing that they update is their, is their Facebook. And their Facebook is... Whenever they have something going on, you know, I like to put out things that are scuttlebutt that I hear and uh, I hear from other people. Hey, and then I, I try to get like two or three sources saying, hey, there's going to be a, for example, I was just talking about the C5. The C5, they're just waiting on paperwork for it to be moved over. I was talking about the move for of Damage Incorporated 2, which is the B-52H. That was moved from Pima to Oklahoma City. That um, they arrived this past week, by the way, John. Over in, yeah, uh, they tracked it real close for what four or five days, and then it dropped off. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, no, actually, they they uh, they towed it to the Boeing facility that's in uh, that's on Tinker Air Force Base, mm -hmm. and it's going to be participating in the modernization of the B fifty two fleet. Um, you know, we're recording this, and um, like I said, the first uh, portion of this, I was blabbing all over the place, so. And we got about six minutes left. I'm probably going to cut me off and whatnot. So if I have to come back on for another 30 minutes, I will do so. But probably not. I've got other things I have to get done today. Um, but the things that we were talking about, John and I have been collaborating on the history of the Pima Air and Space Museum. Um, I don't think one has been written yet. And um, I was talking to Del Lowry about this as well. And, to see what we can do is we can get uh, a collaboration of all three of us to where we can, you know, at least put it into a book about the history of the museum, you know. And I think uh, I think James Stem and um, Von Gale, uh, Count Von Galen did a nice job on the, the stuff that's already there, but I think the history of the museum and how it became to be, I think, would be a a really good. Um, I really get something for all of us, you know, for all historians and aviation buffs and how this museum became about. I mean, this this museum is 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 very strong. It's got over 400 aircraft uh, sitting on sitting on the grounds, and they keep getting more. 
and as I was just discussing before you came in, John, um, we had um, a moves. I was talking about other aircraft aircraft going to other other places, such as you've got the collusion at C 130s that are being refit. Um, you've got the Sherpas that have left, and you've got the damage incorporated that that uh, has been moved out. And now we've got the Black Bunny F four that was just pulled over just to be shipped out to, to uh, Castle. Now, worldwide aircraft uh, recovery, the people that move that, I think, I think I heard something that they might move part of their operation down here, which will be something very awesome. What do you think, John? Uh, yeah, that would, that would create a lot more activity. I'm probably gonna pop out and back here and somehow I've lost my video here. But, I can see uh, you just fine, by the way. Yeah, uh, okay. I've lost all video, but who, no, you know. that, you're good. Just uh, I can everybody can probably see you and I, I think what you did put tape. I think you put tape on on the uh, <laughs> on the camera. I think that's what happened. I clicked <laughs> something to try to maximize, and it, I just went away. So no, you're good. We all can see you. I'm pretty <laughs> okay. sure. <laughs> but no, like I said, John Tobin. We got Christopher Hogue. Christopher Hogue writes wonderful. Um, he writes wonderful things about about the aircraft that are at the museum, and that's why I've actually put some of the stuff that he's got on the group, and I put it into the knowledge base, because the knowledge base people need to know where those aircraft came from and you know what's part of our collection, you know, and I'm thinking about doing the same thing that Boneyard Safari does, as far as keeping track of all of the aircraft and their view be, be, uh, numbers and everything like that. And the backstories, you know, Christopher has been really instrumental in doing a lot of work. I've went back to some of the stuff that he's written, and I'm going to start um, moving some of that stuff over to the knowledge base with some of his pictures of pictures, videos, things like that of it. Um, we've got two new videos coming out. I'm sure you saw the I'm sure you saw the video for the Raider, the North Raider that I put up there, John, on the YouTube yeah. channel. Uh, but I got tired, dude, uh, last week before. I haven't had a chance to upload it yet. But I did upload a video when I went live for um, the last time I was there. And uh, it was just a, kind of like a dialogue -ish thing. But right now, Pima's got still got uh, Balls 3, which is the B-52 over there they're still doing. And they just uh, got a – they're redoing the Cobra. One of the cobras they brought it into the uh to the restoration hangar um got a couple people from pima actually on the, the uh um the group as well and, and uh one one of which i i forgot his name i apologize just kill me later but um he is a tram driver for for the uh for the museum and he just started his job over there and i want to congratulate him um, he knows who he is. Um, I'll probably mention it later. Um, but I also want to give James Stem. I'm going to mention James Stem in this uh, discussion. James, if you watch this, um, we here at the uh, fans of the Pima Air and Space Museum want to give you a big send off on your new position um, over at the National uh, Nuclear Science Museum over there in Albuquerque. Uh, we wish you well. Thank you very much for coming to our interviews and things like that. Um, you're you're you were you're going to be a sorely missed uh, piece of the Pima Air Museum for 25 years. And you know, uh, like I said, James, it's been fun. Um, it's nice to get to know you finally. And um, if you're watching this, I appreciate you coming on and giving us an interview. So we wish you well here uh, from the fans of the Premier and Space Museum. Give them a round of applause. Yeah, James. James got the uh, position over there. I'm. I'm very. I'm, I tried to get his permission to give him a send off, but he never answered me. So I decided to just go ahead and do it. But uh, um, let's see. It is 12:30. So let's see how far we can go with this recording <laughs> before it cuts me off. <laughs> So, um, 
I don't know if you, you've heard already that the uh, Flying Leatherneck Museum has, been, has opened back up, John. Yeah, I just recently saw, saw a blurb on that. That's a, that's a good save. Uh, Definitely. You know, with the recent pandemic and everything, there's been a, a lot of medium and small museums put at risk and chance of losing a lot of good aircraft if, if you know we don't have some things like that where some of these museums are able to get back on their feet. Right, John. What and I saw was... something somewhere that they're saying that Florida is rerouting uh, some of the roads where Pensacola will be public access in the future. I did Which hear about be that. A great yeah. boom for them. I did hear about that. That's going to bolster the local economy too. I mean, um, as far as as the museum goes, they should at least carve it out. Make sure you know, hey, yeah. make make the museum you know, in itself, you know, in itself, mm -hmm. just kind of like him is outside of Davis Mountain Air Force Base, for example. And we got, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, the one over in, in Temecula, California, March Air Museum. It used to be mm -hmm. part of March Air Force Base. That, that All that land used to be part of Air March Air Force Base. Yeah. And now it's a museum. See, they need to coordinate off to, for a museum. Now <laughs> I did, um, I when Steve Smith was here, and I met him, and I kind of got a got the ideas for the interviews. Um, I, I told him, I said, Steve, you know, why don't you just bring the Flying Leathernecks Museum to Tucson, or even to Yuma, or maybe to like uh, another Marine base like Camp Pendleton or something like that. See, that's the problem with the military. The military doesn't want that on the, on their uh, on their base. Okay. Because then they're going to have to have all that information they have to get from all of the people, uh, driver's licenses, just a royal pain just to get on base, you know, as a civilian. Um, no problem for the, uh, for the military people. Oh, well, I'll just flash my military ID and that's it. Boom. That's it. And it's understandable because of security. I mean, that's no, no big issue there. But uh, as far as... As far as a museum, a museum should be close to a base. Or not, I wouldn't say close to a base, but you know what I mean? Just, you know, yeah. close, kind of like what Davis Mountain is for the Air Museum, PM Air Museum, you know, pretty cool. You know, we got so much, see, we, we are absolutely lucky that we have Davis Mountain and the Boneyard right next door because we see everything that comes in. You know, that's awesome. You know, everything that comes in. Well, if, if I can jump in, Dan, Pima's got actually four key assets. And if you look at it from a business point of view, mm -hmm. I mean, like you say, you've got Davis Mountain, mm -hmm. uh, you've got the storage area, but then, you know, within just half a half skip off of I-10, you've got easy access. And then with the, the aviation community there, uh, you've got a large pool of volunteers. Uh, 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 you probably know better than anybody in the restoration area. You've got more volunteers than uh, mm -hmm. than probably paid employees there. Um, <laughs> and Ed, that's Ed, true. Ed, uh, you, you go down to in Macon to Warner Robbins, mm -hmm. and they've done the same thing. They've got uh, the museum of aviation there is outside the base. Uh, they got a good population. They wisely built that museum outside the base, mm -hmm. and it's it's re, you know it's a it's a four or five mile drive from the interstate, but it's not accessible. It's like Pima, you know, you can drive down the road and go, hey, I see some airplanes. I think I'll get off. Yeah. And we had that, a lot of that happen before we ever opened. Absolutely. Uh, so you're not far from Warner Robins, are you? Um. Probably about two, two and a half hours. Because I used to live in, in Warner Robins and mm -hmm. I used to live in Gray. You know where Gray is? No. Uh -uh. Gray is right above Macon. Okay. It's on the, it's called on the Gray yeah. Highway. It goes towards Milledgeville and north of Grumman and all that stuff and, and Boeing. Okay. Um, yeah. And I used to go there almost every weekend. And uh, my father is... And this is where I got my got into my got my father. My father got, got me mad about this because my dad got a bomb release handle from a B-52 and one of the 
you know, uh, autopilot lights, the little, little light uh, bezels that go on top of the light itself. Mm -hmm. He pulled it off and he he, uh, he found the bomb release handle on the floor. And I, 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 I basically tore him up. I said, Dad, why did you get this? This is a historic airplane. Why did you take it off the plane? Oh, well, it was open. <laughs> you know, he, he never did that again. I mean, I, I actually yeah. went up to, I went up inside the cockpit of the B-52. It was open. It wasn't locked. And I said to myself, I, I, I basically went like this. I, I face palmed like this. I said, Dad, <laughs> why? So my father had more respect for, for planes yeah. after that, you know. He said, that, you know, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't resist that one because it was like, Dad, why did you do that? Now, now apparently, there are, I think, what two or three or four uh, F-117s in, in museums right now. Pima is still on the list. We still haven't gotten ours yet. And I, I've been talking to my contacts, so to speak, my all my contacts over there, and. They've been telling me that um, they're still on the list and they're still waiting for one to be released from the Air Force because they're still up in uh, in Tonopah. They're still sitting there in, in Tonopah in a hangar. And all the, all the storage. And uh, um, I monitor a website called dreamlandresort.com because what they do is they watch Area 51 and the base and Tonopah and all that stuff that's around there, as well as the red flag exercises. And they they were telling me that they have not they have not seen any movement of any of those F one seventeens yet, and that's how I know that they haven't moved any to any any other museums other than Hill, Palm Springs. Um, I forget what else. Air Force Museum. I think there's three or four out there. I forget which, but that's one of the reasons why they're, they're slowly releasing them because they're still flying them. Believe it or not, they are still flying those F-117s. In fact, I got some friends of mine. Uh, there was pictures of an F-117, two F-117s that landed at, at uh, Miramar um, uh, Marine Corps Air Station. Don't know why. I guess they were in transit or something like that, or they were trying to, re or they were refueling. But uh, he said that they did a couple passes over. They landed. They stopped for about maybe two or three hours and then they took off again. But like I said, it's strange. See, and I, I think it's kind of cool because I know there's pictures out there. Somebody took some photos of the B2 tooling because I've seen them online. Somebody took a, somebody took the pictures of those. They have all the tooling for the B2 stealth bomber. You know, I've got all my feelers out for, I've got part of a group called um, uh, What's Happening or something like that and Plant Food or Two, Palmdale, John. And they they watch, they do the same thing we do. They watch the PM Air, they watch the base. Okay, they watch the airport, Palmdale Airport. And they watch what goes in and out of there all the time because of uh, the Skunk Works, Boeing and Northrop Grumman. Because all three of those are there. I think it's kind of funny because they were talking about the the B three or the the new B twenty one Raider, um, and somebody grabbed a, an aerial picture of the drone and a possible mock up of the B twenty one Raider. And I'm looking at it like it says, "Yeah, it looks just like a B B two Bell stealth bomber." So be right back, Dan. Keep going. All right, no problem. Yeah. So basically, guys, you know, we're kind of on a on the list for the BSB uh, F one hundred and seventeen stealth fighter. Um, apparently, what the John uh, James Stem actually confirmed this uh, in our earlier interviews, our in our early interview that we had, and he basically stated that uh, the uh, F-117, um, they don't know when it's going to be here, but that way, I guess it's going to be a surprise. I mean, even 
even the staff and the curators don't even know when they're coming in probably i mean it's it's possibility the only one that really knows probably ahead of time is uh count Juan galen and Steve, uh, scott marchant okay and whoever the new possibly the new new curator you know they got to be in the know but it's uh, about 12 40 guys it looks like we uh are able to run over this uh meeting here it's been about 55 minutes wow almost an hour since i started recording um since i started this so but um like i said this is what's pretty much going on i mean um you keep it now that i have i've changed schedules now so where i could be at the museum once or twice a week you know once on the weekend once on the weekday if i if i can you know uh, and that's kind of what I plan to do is I plan on going for a few hours on a Monday because I got Mondays off and on Saturday and Sunday, either either day or all three days by, if you're convenient. So that way I can see what's going on and I can actually talk to the people who are there. OK, I can get information. Um, my contacts that I have are, are get busy sometimes. And you know, like I said, Steve Williams did a heck of a job at uh, uh, putting up that list of all that's happened in 2021. And I'm hoping he does it for 2022. Um, Steve, if you're out there, uh, thank you very much. That was good. I'm gonna make a uh, an online post on the website about the, the moves and everything like that. And that's kind of what I wanna do. I wanna make sure everybody's in the know about the, the Air, Air, for Air Museum so that if, in case you come to Tucson, those that are not in Tucson, whoever comes to Tucson can actually maybe plan a trip, say, hey, there's a C5 coming in on this day, or there's an F-117 coming in on this day. I want to check it out. Welcome back, John. Yeah, I was, let me jump in on that. Uh, that was a great list. I really appreciated that. Oh, yeah. And, Steve, and I, it, uh, I asked Steve to be able one of our are one of our criers about the uh, stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know what a crier is, right? Yeah, it it underscores uh, something that's really unique about Pima's history. Uh, if you look at all the aircraft uh, that have come through Pima and been saved and gone on somewhere else, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize uh, how much Pima's contributed to other museums all around the country. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you walk into the Dallas, Smithsonian's Dallas facility, there are two aircraft in there that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for FEMA. And see, there's one, there's that one uh, Convair aircraft that they were, that we were talking about. You know, you know, I believe it was not this group, but Aviation Rex and Relics. I remember that you chimed in on it. Uh, what was the XB66 or something like that? Convair? It was like a P36, uh, B36 Peacemaker nuclear version of it. Yeah. You remember that one? Yeah. Yeah. There was only one, and I believe that the remnants are, I think, are still at, uh, in the boneyards. You know, those, those kind of aircraft, you know, we need to save. Now, I took a picture. I don't know if you saw the picture, John, of the... I don't know what it was. It looked kind of to me. It looks like it looked like a a B twenty five carcass. Okay, um, if you look back on some of the posts mm -hmm. on the fans, oh, of yeah, Pima, yeah. the jig. Yeah, that that's one of that's one of the reasons I I stopped there. I I saw that on the trailer. I'm like, wait a minute. I pulled parked my truck. I'm like, I sat there and I started taking pictures of it. Like, I and then I I I started getting out of my truck to get a closer look. And somebody started, you know, Pima, one of the Pima uh, buggies started coming over to me and say, hey, you know, you know, just kind of stay away from that because it's being towed out of here. I said, I just want to find out and see if I can find any any uh, military BU numbers or anything like that so I can look it up. And he said, oh, it's a, it's a, I think it's a PBJ or B-21. I said, I said, that's what I thought. It kind of looked like that. But I don't think it is. I really don't. I think somebody they don't want you to know what it really is. But it was on a on a flatbed trailer. It was on a, a regular yeah. flatbed, but not a tractor trailer. 
You saw the photo. You saw the photos. Yeah. You know, um, like I said, there's a lot of stuff back there that hasn't been restored yet. I have yet to see them even touch that United 727. I've not even seen it. I mean, they, they, from what I understand, they said that the interior is completely intact. And it's gonna, it looks like it was just rolled off the, uh, mm -hmm. the assembly line. I sincerely doubt that. I sincerely mm -hmm. doubt that. But it's, it, it looks so rough on the outside that it's been weathered so bad. You know, it's, uh, even the old United colors are fading, you know. But. I mean, they got a lot of aircraft out there that they need to restore. I know that they're going to be putting out that Mirage out there, but you remember what happened with the Mirage on the on the air show, right? They were going to originally tow the Mirage. Oh, and the tires. And, yeah, the tires blew up. I actually have pictures of that now. Of the tires. The tires are pretty much almost shredded. Yeah, just, uh, you know. Well, all the museums have a terrible time with tires, no matter where they're located. Mm -hmm. and, and it seems like, you know, no matter what you do, unless, unless you make covers for them, uh, they're going to weather, you know, weather rot somehow. Preserving, preserving tires is, is a whole curation problem unto itself. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I was. Uh, first, you got to jack them up and get the weight off the darn things. You know, that's why I was that those posts I put up on the uh, the C one thirty three. Yeah, know, many people picked up on that. In some of the pictures of the museum, there are two C one thirty threes. Yeah, and uh, it looks like two C one thirty threes put mashed together. No, uh, there, there were two of them, mm -hmm. um, and one and one of them. Uh, is over at Mojave. Mojave it, had a bent, it had a bent prop, so they couldn't ferry it out of DM over to Tucson International. Mm -hmm. So they came over to Pima, and and the guys uh, did the change out, and they borrowed the landing gear doors because the FAA decided they couldn't ferry it without landing gear doors, and we never got the gear doors back. So they're laying over there at Mojave somewhere. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I actually, I've actually been to Mojave uh, Air and Spaceport. Yeah, that before. was the uh, foundation for airborne relief. Mm -hmm. That was one of their three aircraft. Yeah, I actually was over there at uh, Mojave Air and Spaceport when I, I used to work. Um, you know, in my other job, they sent me to Bakersfield and um, from uh, L A, uh, from Tucson to L A. I was, you know, staying in L A. And I had a, I drove from Bakersfield all the way to Mojave, well, and then down to, to past Palmdale at night. <coughs> that's, that's where I saw the Skunk Works visually, personally myself. I wanted to stop there so bad, but I had to get back at a certain time. So I was like, I can only stop here like for like 15 minutes, maybe get a soda or something like that. I was like, dang it, <laughs> dang it, oh God, I want to do that so bad. So, but. I tried to do a roundabout, you know. I went by Edwards Air Force Base. I got, I showed you guys pictures of balls, uh, balls eight, mm -hmm. uh, which is the other one. And uh, this one here that we got is is a treasure. The one that we have at the museum is a treasure, because that one that one is the only aircraft that dropped the X fifteen. And I think that they're doing a heck of a job. I was looking at some of the restoration. My contact was telling me and show me some photographs of he of the paint and, and the airframe of the air of the B-52. The B-52 is sagging so bad it looks like it's gonna come off. Uh, and that's because of corrosion. Yeah. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to insert, you know, they're trying to strengthen the wings so the wings can uh, not fall off or snap, you know. So I think what they're gonna do. Is they're going to put it on on a pedestal and get it supported that way? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But because it's it's really it's the one over at the Davis Monthan, okay, the one at the uh, the the air park that they had, they had to take out of there because it was crackling. It was cracking. 
and it was about ready to fall. And the oddly enough, oddly enough, the gunners, uh, the gunners compartment is over at the Premier Air Museum yeah. of that same very airplane. So, um, I think I think Pima's doing a great job of what they're doing. There's certain things I will I will I will make it clear here, make it very clear that I don't like some of the practices they're doing which you already know what I'm talking about there, John. I mean, those those that don't know, you know, are, I'd rather keep it kind of detracted. If anybody wants to know about it, they can uh, contact me. But as far as that V1 buzz, the buzz bomb, the V1 buzz bomb, that one concerns me because, of course, Pima bought it from another so-called museum in Canada that was restored by another individual or that was rebuilt and that other other person that was rebuilt that rebuilt it of course we that's that's the thing it never got credit for it you know that's kind of yeah i mean even even the curator probably didn't even know where, where who rebuilt it however you know the person that rebuilt it actually has approached the beam museum about it you know you know i I try to kind of you know, talk with this individual and say, look, you know, hey, I'll just put a plaque on there, get it over there myself. You know, they don't really check it you know, you know, and stuff like that. But no, nah. I'm just going to stay away from that, you know, because Pima is a good, good, uh, good, good outlet for our aircraft, you know, and I think they're doing a heck of a job at what they're doing. I mean, there's, they're, they're doing what they're, they're jo a good job with, with either the, and the resources they got and the manpower that they have, you know what I'm saying, John? Mm -hmm. And the volunteers that come in there to help out, shoot, I'd be there in a heartbeat if I knew about how to restore planes or work on planes. I'd be there like that, <coughs> you know? I'd be, sit I'd be sitting there, uh, like for example, the uh, B-29 that they have in that one, one, or the one hangar sentimental journey, or the I'll be around B-17, I'd sit there and I'd, I'd clean the thing. That's them shine her up, shine her up, you know. Like what really needs a lot of TLC, I think, is they need to make another hangar for airliners. Okay. They need to put all the airliners around, the, the ones that can't fit in the hangar. They put it all around that particular hangar. You know, put the hangar here, put the ones that can fit inside that are treasures, like the TWA constellation that we have. Star of Switzerland, and put that inside along with some of the airliners, the smaller airliners. <laughs> okay, there, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I'm thinking that um, with this build they've got, that, with the that's building, a pretty substantial building. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. I'm, what I'm saying is the smaller airliners, like the prop-driven planes and things like that. That that those are treasures to keep. Now, the important ones, such as the um, 787 they have out there, as well as the test bed and the first 777 prototype, that we've got that prototype. That on Cathay Pacific is the first pro the first aircraft that was flown out of Boeing mm -hmm. for the 777. And it was gifted by, to, uh, by Cathay Pacific to us. And... I found out something interesting too about that. But my, if you look at my write-up about the uh, the test bed, um, <coughs> test bed for the General Electric was originally the Pan Am jet. It's 100, uh, 747 100, and that was given. Well, when, uh, General Electric bought it from Pan Am when they went under, and that was interesting. They flew it from uh, JFK to the location of where their test site was. And they, it was funny because Sam Chewy, um, he does all kinds of aviation stuff. He lives in Dubai and all that. He like, flies around and everything. I was supposed to meet him last year, but unfortunately that didn't happen because he didn't, he was just going through Tucson to go to the Expo, Aviation Expo in, in Vegas. Then he came back to Tucson a week later to film the test bed that's over at Tucson International. 
the 747 for Rolls Royce. So that's what prompted me to do more of a history about that plane is him coming down, you know. And, you know, like I said, it's just been this year is going to be a really good year. And I hope everybody had a great year. Uh, you know, this year is going to be a big blessing. It's starting out very strong. We've got a lot of uh, all good things happening. So, um, yeah. Hey, this was a pretty good talk. I mean, I'm glad you came in, John. At least I, could, I wasn't talking to myself all the whole time, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I'm getting senile, you know. <laughs> but um, I want to let everybody know that this Zoom, this Zoom meeting is going to be probably maybe once or twice every or once or twice a month i'm going to do um a premier and space museum talk um i'd like to get a lot more people in on this uh this is just the premiere of it i've been planning this for quite a while and i want everybody to uh enjoy our talks and everything like that what have you seen what are your experiences of the air museum when you come out to the museum you can post uh, experiences on our website. I'm going to make it to where you can post um, your experiences. Either you send them to me, or you can post them on the the uh, groups, the group, and then I'll post them on on the uh, on the website. That's one, another thing. Uh, we also have another thing coming up. I've been researching. Uh, and John, you also have spoken to me about this as well in private. But I'm going to let everybody know. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. We are going to have an educational section for kids and for uh, young adults because that's what this is all focused about. We're focused on uh, Pima's mission is to preserve the history of aviation. We're here to help that. However, we're trying to get children and, and young adults interest back in, into uh Aviation. I've got uh, a nice uh, young, a nice young lady who's going to help me, as well as you, John. I'm sure you're going to help me out. I'm sure whoever wants to help me can just send me ideas and information. Uh, I got stuff from NASA that I've been I've been reading, and I've been focusing on. I've gotten permission from. I'm going to be getting permission from NASA to post that stuff on the website to repost it. Um, there's programs out there that you can download that'll, you know, like, for example, uh, wing lift simulators that you can, you know, get involved in. Like, Pima's got that great air, paper airplane thing going on to get kids involved, stuff like that. I want to do something even better than that. I want to be able to give them the activities. I want to try to hold something at the museum, say, hey, okay, how does an airplane fly? Let's go ahead and get a model model helicopter, a small little tiny one. Okay, how does it get lifted off like that? You know, that kind of stuff. And we are going to have a new version of the forums. I'm going to probably, re, I revamped, I'm going to revamp the forums later on down the road. I'm not going to sit there and, and put one on there right now because there's no real interest in it. Uh, we have our, our group that's a, a forum. So... Um, we've got a lot of new things coming up for the site. Um, educational section, we're going to have stories about your trips and trip reports is what I'm going to call them. I'm stealing the idea from another website, pretty, pretty much uh, trip reports on your trip reports to the museum and what you experienced, what you saw, pictures that you've posted, you know, things like that. And that's going to all go on the website. And, um, what we'll post is I'll post uh, a post about your trip report. So everybody who sends a trip report when you go to the museum, send them to me or put them, post them on the group and I will get them up on the website so they're permanent. Um, John, got any uh, comments about that educational thing? Uh, not directly, but something that might be interesting if, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, sinuses are acting up today. Me Weather's too. changing. Um, if someone from the museum could uh, do something kind of like a, a history of of how they pick out a display, you know, all the display cabinets they've got, 
with mm-hmm. uniforms and and uh, like over by the S three, all the the anti submarine uh, equipment. How they decide on on what what cabinets to do and how they figure out the layout, you know, uh, and, and how that process. Or I imagine there's an awful lot behind the scenes uh, that maybe over over years goes into developing some of those displays. Uh, that doesn't get a lot of appreciation uh, that would be interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a good idea. You know, we maybe we could start featuring, um, I wouldn't say the workers per se, just the uh, the way the displays are set up, like you said, you know, just mm-hmm. exactly what you said. How um, do they pick a theme and then how do yeah. they acquire the collection and then how do they figure out where and how and, you know. John, there's your new task. There's your new task. (laughs) (laughs) You came up with the idea. You got to put forth that uh, that idea for me so I can present it. Just, you know, hey. Um, By the way, um, John, I want to thank you. I've got people drooling over the stickers you gave to me uh, (laughs) when you came out. No, 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 no. You don't understand. Oh, yeah. There is, there is no, there there is no, um, that one from the Iranian Air Force yeah. is so rare. I see people online paying almost two hundred dollars for it. Oh yeah, they they were rare when they came out. Yep. So I've got <laughs> I've got it. I'm gonna I'm gonna put them in a in a, a case. I'm like, look what I got. Oh, I do want to. If you let something happen to that, I'll have to come hurt you. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're put. They're t- they're tucked away. I've got pictures of it. Uh, guys, I want to show you what I just picked up at the museum uh, uh, last time I was there. This is a great book. I've been, I've been reading it. Uh, it's about the, uh, of course, the SR-71. And uh, it's all, it, I only paid $10 for the book. But the gentleman that, um, he was there at the museum, okay? You can meet pioneers of aviation because they do come to the Air Museum. And they also either they announce it or like, for example, I met Patty Wagstaff over there when, right before she was going to do her air show. Um, I have a book by Mr. Don A. Don A. Burns and Kenneth D. Hurley. It's called Black Book Rising or Blackbird Rising. I don't know if you guys can see it. Probably not. But let's see if I can. There you go. I there you go. Up put up in front of my face. It's called Blackbird Rising. I've been reading this. This is a personal account of, uh, I'm going to feature a book that I, I'm, I'm reading. I read, okay. Uh, it's called Birth of an Aviation Legend. It's the revised second edition. This book came out in uh, 1999. Okay, right when the, right when the SR-71 was being retired. Okay, I believe it, Pima got their SR-71 back in the 2000, I think it was, right? Or no, or 90, 97, 96, something like that. Because it was, I remember being outside. But this book here talks about a personal, um, this is not how to operate it. This is actual personal experience on the development of, of the uh, uh, you know, one I believe one was a pilot, Kenneth uh, Hurley. He was a he was a pilot of one of the SR seventy ones, and he also um, um, was assisting in developing uh, from the A twelve on up. Which I, I this is a gem of a book, guys. Again, uh, Pima sells this in their gift shop. I had to purchase it because I'm a book a book freak. Just like an aviation freak, I like to read about books. So, another thing I've been I've been really focused on is space and space exploration. That's my next thing I'm going to be posting is about the uh, solid rocket booster that's out there. Uh, that solid rocket booster came from Vandenberg Air Force Base. It was basically a, a, an unused backup of one of the. Um, boosters that Enterprise was going to be launched from there to primarily do military 
um, I think it was military military payloads. So that that particular solid rocket booster is now laying on its side as you walk in on the in the Premier Museum. Now, if if you guys look at my my background here, the entrance is right straight. Okay, then you got the the A4 Skyhawk to the right of where it says Premier Museum and, and the building. You'll see. When you as you go in the solid rocket booster, I, I want to. I'm trying to feature more space stuff because it's called the Pima Air and Space Museum. Okay, that's the one of the things is what I want to start doing is start getting. See, the problem is they don't have a lot of space artifacts. I have one space artifact that they, they would love to have. It's called the Saturn V um, flight manual. I just have it sitting in my cabinet here. So I, I just gotten it. I'm I'm not gonna probably I'm not gonna part with that. It's from the Marshall Space Flight Center. But um, <coughs> but anyway, this is getting a little bit long, guys. So it's been an hour and twenty one minutes. I'm not sure if this will let me record it. It might do it in chunks. I don't know yet. I don't know how uh, Zoom is gonna do this. But um, yes. I want to make this a, either a weekly thing or every couple of weeks, you know, a museum talk. I want to try to get into things that I've seen and what I've not seen, uh, things that you've seen. Like I said, chat about anything. Uh, just keep it civil. No vulgar. vulgar, vulgar. I, I violated the rule earlier, so bad boy. Um, and no attacking it. Uh, uh, one another and, and no no advertising you know you know, the same rules for the group apply for these chats so uh i'm gonna wait till john gets back because uh i think he uh, went to get some more coffee <laughs> but it was nice to meet john and tobin john and his wife over there at uh at the museum and at the year so we kind of sat down and we we all had something to drink and uh, me and Tobin and John, we actually walked uh, pretty much most of the museum. I had to leave because I was doing something that afternoon over at the base. So, what, John, copy run out on you? Yeah. I had figures. To, had to recycle it. <laughs> recycle. I need to get more copy myself. I, <laughs> I, I ran out of copy. But no, you know, like I said, guy, I was telling everybody, John, that I don't know if you heard, but, you know, I met you and, and your wife and, and, and Tobin. I met Tobin at the, air, at the air show also. He was walking around looking at the RVs and stuff like that they had over there. I said, Tobin, this is nice. I like that, you know, well, nice and comfortable. He said, yeah, but mine's a little bit smaller than this or whatever. I'm like, okay. But to Tobin, Tobin's such a nice guy. He doesn't, he doesn't look like it. He looks like he's always angry. He looks like he's always, doesn't he look like he's always angry? It's funny. Yeah. It's funny. We're, we're all, all all stuck with the bug we were born with. <laughs> well, look at, he's a, he always has that angry look on him, you know. It's like, but he's real nice. He's a real nice fellow, you know. <coughs> but um, from all those those years working electronics, were you, you know, squinting at a circuit? No, I, I think it has something more to do with him actually hitting those electrical wires and getting zapped. <laughs> Tell them we're just picking at you if you're watching this. So I think it's funny because it's like I, you know, he told me he told me since he lo he loves the way that things are being being done uh, with the group and everything like that. He really loves the way the group is taken off, you know. And the love of the Premier Museum is the reason he started it. You know, he loves aviation just like yeah. anyone else. You know, he's lived it. You've lived it. You know, there's a lot of people that have lived it that were in the military. I unfortunately have never had the privilege to do that, except for my my dad, quote unquote. You know, <coughs> and that's my my great uncle was a, a DC six pilot, and he was uh, taking out um, prisoners that were freed from in Colombia, and unfortunately he hit a patch of low clouds, and his plane hit a mountain, killed everybody instantly, including him. 
And that's kind of another reason I got into aviation is because of him. You know, he was a, he was a good pilot. He was flying um, flying uh, DC six, the four engine DC six. That's why I love what, seeing the DC six as if it's over there. You know, because I that's the plane that he, he used to fly. I have pictures of him uh, when I was a kid. I don't know if I, I don't know where they're at now, but I saw pictures of him standing next to his DC six. And that, that was actually taken right about maybe two hours before he had to fly that mission to take him out. It's amazing because my, my uncle had the uh, my uncle had his colonel bars, his colonel. He was a colonel, plumbing colonel. And it's funny. It's funny that the way things filter down to the next generation, you know, like if. Uh, for example, Michelle Curran, the um, Thunderbird number six, sorry, Thunderbird number five. She's young enough where she could become an astronaut and it feels filtered down to her children when, when, they, when they get older. Amazing, isn't it? Right, John? Mm, yep. So. Checking the schedule. Oh, you're checking the schedule? Not allowed to do that. All right, guys, uh, I'm gonna, it's been an hour and 26 minutes. Actually, you know what? Let's extend it out to an hour and 30 minutes and see if it actually saves here. So, yeah, well, there's a lot going on over there. I mean, every day there's something going on over at the museum. Uh, I know that the, I'm not sure if this has happened yet or not, but I know that the 390th Strategic Missile Wing, uh, as you all know, the Titan Missile Museum is also part of the Arizona uh, Aerospace Foundation. I consider that part of the Premier Museum. So if you're down in Green Valley, Arizona, they have a missile silo that was part of the 390th Strategic Missile Wing. Uh, they were one of 18. This particular silo was one part of, uh, of one wing uh, down in Green Valley. And you can actually go, it's open up to the public as a museum. Uh, Arizona Aerospace Foundation was very, very awesome to help preserve that site. Because uh, as you know, the Titan II was a very large weapon. Uh, it was one of the largest uh, uh, warheads that the United States and the world has ever seen. It's like, uh, I believe it's a, a three megaton warhead or something like that. And um, it could take out an entire city in one, in one shot, and even, even a near miss. So, but that, that museum down there preserves that kind of history for the Cold War. And I think if you're down here in Tucson, remember that Pima is going to be here and Titan Missile Museum is going to be down in Green Valley. And soon to be open right next door to the Pima Air Museum is the Arizona v uh, Military Vehicle Museum. So if you guys are down here when that opens up as a grand opening, definitely I will be there for the grand opening. Um, apparently it's supposed to be a great break ground in here in March to start building it. They've already started to clear all the, uh, some of the brush out of there. Um, it cleared some of the brush for a road there, John. Mm -hmm. And I think what's going to happen is it's going to clear the whole area for a parking lot. I don't know. They might pave the one parking lot where they bring the planes in. I don't know. I doubt that. Because it goes right to the back gate. You know, but that military museum is pretty cool. We've actually, uh, they have actually got over at the Air Museum, one of the uh, vehicles that helped to bring down Saddam Hussein's statue. I actually pulled it down, excuse me. Uh, it was also featured in the movie Transformers, More That Meets the Eye. Thanks to uh, Christopher Hogue for that information, by the way. He has, I didn't know that. That was Bone Crusher in, in, in Transformers. But all right, guys, uh, we're at uh, an hour and 30 minutes. Let's see if this saves here. And if it does, I will be uploading it to YouTube. Uh, watch it on YouTube and check it out. <coughs> thank you for joining us. Uh, John, thank you for joining us as well. I appreciate that. I didn't, yep. you're, since you're the only one here, <laughs> I, I advertise this about a day or so. Uh, too, too late. I'm supposed to do it on Wednesday, but 
Uh, I'm going to try to do it a week in advance so people have enough uh, notice. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to go ahead and advertise this at least a week in advance when there is going to be one of these. Uh, I'm trying to do it either every two weeks or every month or even every week. So I think every couple of couple of weeks would be good because a lot of people are are busy, things like that. And every month we have it. So for now, thank you for joining us. Thank you, John Taylor, for joining us. I appreciate that. We will catch you later. Enjoy, guys. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching.